What's up guys, James here with Fun Fact of the Day. Hope you guys are having a great day, learning lots, and getting stuff done. Today, we are here to talk about pirates, arg. What do pirates wear to see in the dark? Eye patches. That's right. Do pirates actually wear eye patches? And if so, why? Well, I'm sure there are a lot of pirates who have lost their eyes to various swords and pointy things on a boat. However, a lot of pirates with both eyes wore eye patches because by covering up one eye, it allowed them to go under a boat's deck to the dark areas that are below and immediately switch the eye patch over and be ready to see in the dark. That way, one eye is always adjusted to the dark. Now that we know that they can see because of eye patches, let's talk about the rum that they drink until they go blind. You've probably all heard the frat boys who go to Mexico on their spring vacation and they're like, Bro, don't drink the water, white claws, hashtag no laws when you're drinking the claws, as an excuse to basically just drink a bunch of alcohol instead of water. Well, here the same thing applies. On boats, water is stored in barrels, and those barrels sit for weeks and months and years at a time and get really gross and cause dysentery when you drink them. So in order to kill all of the bacteria, they pour a whole bunch of rum into the barrels of water and drink what's basically now known as grog. It is essentially a ton of water with a little bit of rum and then some lemon juice to prevent scurvy and some sugar to make it not taste awful. Now, let's address the other pirate-related elephant in the room, and that is hoop earrings. Did they actually wear these things? And if they did, did they yell, hold my hoops, before every single conflict out at sea? And why did they wear these hoop earrings? At the time, it was such a classically feminine item. Why did they pick these to be their thing? First, let's talk about why they actually wore hoop earrings. The main reason is because it was a perfect place to store wax. That sounds weird, right? Why would you store wax in an earring? Well, they used cannons, usually 30 or 40 of them, on every single pirate ship in order to attack and sink other ships. And these cannons were loud. So loud, in fact, that they would actually deafen people permanently. So they would take the wax out of their hoops, put it in their ears, and then they'd go fight people. And that way, later, when they were debating who gets what loot, they could argue about things and actually hear it. But wait, there's more. These earrings actually doubled as a life insurance policy. You see, they were made of thick gold, usually as thick as the pirate could afford. And if a pirate died out at sea, the other pirates would melt those earrings down and sell them and use the money to pay for their funeral expenses. So it was literally their life insurance. On top of that, a lot of them would engrave the port name that they wanted to be buried at because these pirates really took burials personally. They made it a big deal. However, burying pirates at ports kind of became a sticky situation in a lot of instances because piracy was so frowned upon as a profession on the mainland. So a lot of those earrings were probably just used to pay for some beers and maybe a new fresh pair of Nike Pirate Ones. Now, are there any real pirates that are scary and deadly like the ones we see on TV today? The answer to that is a blatant yes. Arguably, the scariest of all of them is a man named Edward Teach Captain Blackbeard. You might have heard of him before. He's known for having a giant black beard and being the captain of a scary ship that killed a lot of people. Now, he wasn't just scary because he had a cool name and a beard, or because he killed a lot of people, or even because he stuck a syringe into his urethra willingly on a regular basis. No, those are pretty scary things, but they're not the reason he was known for being so scary. You see, that came from his image. He would do something where he would put a bunch of weed yes, marijuana, into his beard and his hair. And then when he went into battle, he would light it on fire and it would just smoke. So it would look like smoke was coming out of his head, like he was some sort of stoner demon. And that terrified people of the 17th century. Now, what about all the hot girl pirates that we see in movies today? Were there actually female pirates? Well, as far as records go, we know about two of them, so there were at least two. Their names were Mary Reed and Anne Bonny. Mary Reed was a very manly, tough pirate who stowed away pretending to be a man, and Anne Bonny was the first mate and the lover of one of the captains of a very popular ship. 
They were, apparently, so tough that they were tougher than all the men on the pirate ships combined. They ate bowls of rusty nails for breakfast with no milk. And Bonnie even had a famous line where when her captain was captured and being hung, she said, Sorry to see you there, but if you'd have fought like a man, you wouldn't be hanging like a dog. Now, I don't know if hanging dogs was a popular thing back in the 1700s, but she was a hypocrite when she said that, because she also was captured, and the only reason she didn't get hung was because she claimed that she was pregnant, even though she wasn't, and got to go to prison for it instead. Now, what about the pirate flag with the crossbones and skull? Was that real? Yes, it was, to a point. It's called the Jolly Roger flag because it's a smiling skull, and most pirate ships actually did use a black flag with some variation of skull paraphernalia all over it to signal how scary they are. But the real scary flag was the red flag. If a pirate was using a red flag, that meant that when they stormed your ship, they were taking no prisoners. Every single person on that ship was going to be chopped up and put in a poke bowl and sold for $12.99 at shore. Now, what about buried treasure? Did they actually bury treasure? Well, if you want to find some, I'd have to say good luck, because most of the treasure they got from pirating ships was actually just cloth and food and armor and weapons and logs, because those were the things that were traded. Nobody just floated around with thousands of pounds of gold on their ships, at least not at that time. So imagine a pirate saying, hey, Tom, Jack, go bury all these logs. I want them for later. They wouldn't do that. They would take all the treasure back to shore and sell it. And then the money that they made was usually enough to live a very, very moderate life and not starve. However, there actually is one recorded instance of a pirate burying treasure, but it didn't work out for him very well. His name was William Kidd, and he buried some treasure, and then one of his other shipmates went back later, dug it up, and used it as evidence against him to send him to prison and then to be hung for piracy so that he could take over that guy's ship. Yeah, I wouldn't be burying treasure after that either. And now, the final thing about pirates that I wanted to talk about today. Walking the plank. Did people actually do it? Was this a thing? I know it's a thing in every single movie on TV, but it wasn't really a thing. At least it wasn't a recorded thing. They might have made people jump off boats, but at least in recorded history, it wasn't common. However, there was an even more merciless way to torture people that was common, and it was called keel hauling. You might have heard that term before in various pirate movies, but it was definitely not depicted as it actually was. Basically, what keel hauling is, is they would tie a rope to the arms of the person that they were trying to torture, and then they would tie another rope to the legs, and they would throw that rope over the front of the boat and hold it on either side of the boat, with the keel being the bottom of the boat. Now that keel was covered in barnacles, so it was very, very sharp. What they would do was they would drop that guy down into the ocean and move him to the other side, back and forth, essentially cheese grating him to death. It was horrible and much worse than walking the plank. Pirates were actually some of the first people ever to approve of gay marriage. Pirates got married. These hipster-looking social justice warriors practiced something called matelitage, which is essentially the modern-day equivalent to gay marriage. They were very forward-thinking for their day, considering that on the mainland, same-sex marriage was punishable by death. So, this basically meant that they signed into a contract which bound them together for life, and everything in their lives were now shared. So, let's say they raided a boat, and their loot was split, but the other one died. They would make sure to collect their half of the loot because it was owed to them because they were married, and they would be responsible for all funeral proceedings as well. It is thought that this is so popular for the same reasons that these things tend to be popular in current Navy ships as well as prisons. Basically, when a lot of men are put onto a ship together for years at a time without ever seeing another woman, they have needs, and they need to take care of them, and they develop really tight bonds that are pretty much unbreakable. And people wonder why treasure is called pirate booty. And that is pretty much it about pirates. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, click the link right here for a whole bunch more interesting videos about all sorts of things that you can learn, and like and subscribe. It really helps me out, and 
I just appreciate it. So thank you, and I will see you tomorrow or the next day.